We did just hear the President of the United States say, in response to somebody's question, he looked over at the Russian President and said, uh, yeah, and, and don't meddle in the election. Literally, just like that. In fact, in the control room, they're going to re-rack uh, this right now. We don't call it that anymore. I want you to watch it. This is the moment. Listen, fact is stranger than fiction these days. Let's bring in the chief national security correspondent, Jim Shudo, in Osaka, Japan. You know, I was going to have to ask you this tea leaves question, uh, my friend, about where the Russian interference was, just to bring people up to date on what you and I just witnessed. Um, he called uh, the Russian president by his first name, Vladimir. It was nice. Great honor. We're going to discuss mm -hmm. trade, good relationship, the U.S. president said. Positive things never mentioned. Russian interference in the election. And then, in response no. to one of the questions, he said, Oh, yeah, yeah, and don't meddle in the election. Don't meddle in the election. Your take. Yeah. Well, listen, it's clearly not a subject that the President of the United States takes seriously. He's sitting next to the, to the Russian President, who, as the Mueller report established uh, just weeks ago, uh, directed systematic interference in the 2016 presidential election. The President on his way uh, here to Japan, you'll remember he was asked by a reporter, would he bring up election mm -hmm. interference in his bilateral with the Russian president? And he said, none of your business. That was the president's words there. So, so he, he does bring it up, but, but in, a, in, a, in a facetious way, in a joking way, which is, which is remarkable. It's remarkable. And, and the president showing a comfort, a comfort there, as he often has shown with other despots, right? To, to say it's an honor to meet with him, as he has said, with Kim Jong-un, for instance, North Korea. A lot of good things come out of the relationship. Listen, n no one can disparage a U.S. president or a world leader seeking uh, diplomatic relationships with countries like Russia or North Korea. Uh, but but it's, it's what the president, it's sort of the way he describes that relationship, Chris, you know, in very friendly, warm terms. And what he doesn't say, right, which is to challenge them on, on whether it's human rights violations or interference in the election. Uh, that was a test for this president. What he do, what he didn't do in Helsinki, for instance, in Helsinki, where he questioned his own intelligence agency's assessment of Russian interference in the election. Uh, so here he sits next to the Russian president and makes a joke about Russian interference in well, the look, election. I think it's a remarkable moment. Compared to what happened in Helsinki, anything would have been better than that. We've never seen that in American yeah. history. A U.S. president side with an inimical force, and that's what Russia is when it comes to the context of what they did during the election, and to do so over his own intelligence people on the world stage. We've never seen anything yeah. like it. Let's bring in Max Putin, Ron Brownstein. So, Max, look, nobody expects this president to go heavy about Russian interference because he thinks it's bad for him and he believes it's now a game of gotcha. He can't own it. He can't put his hands around it. But to treat it the way he just did, forget about what we think, forget about media perception or even political analysis. In terms of strategic thinking with a power like Russia, what does that mean? Well, once again, uh, Chris, I think that uh, for somebody who thinks of himself as being very strong, Donald Trump actually comes across as very weak, very much as a supplicant to Vladimir Putin. And, you know, Putin is a bully who respects strength, and Donald Trump is not showing any kind of strength. And I would contrast to you the way that he speaks to Putin with the way that right before he took off for Osaka, the way he referred to Angela Merkel, the uh, Chancellor of Germany, one of our greatest allies, he said, you have a woman in Europe, I won't mention her name, she hates the United States perhaps worse than any person I've ever met. So that's Donald Trump talking about the Ooh. Chancellor of Germany, saying the Chancellor of Germany hates the United States worse than any person he's ever met. And he thinks that Putin, what, is, is Putin pro-American? No, Putin is actually one of our greatest adversaries. I mean, there was a debate tonight in the Democratic debate as to who was a bigger adversary, China or Russia. I would say probably China, but Russia is certainly up there. I mean, they attacked our election. They may do it again. Uh, they're attacking allies. They're still invading Ukraine. And remember back in, uh, in November at the last uh, G20 in Argentina, Trump refused to meet with Putin ostensibly because 
Putin had just taken a bunch of Ukrainian sailors, hijacked a bunch of Ukrainian ships. Mm. Well, those ships haven't been released. Right. Putin hasn't done anything to justify this kind of outreach, but there's kind of a sense, perhaps, that Trump feels empowered to reach out to him again with the conclusion of the Mueller investigation. Mm. You know, then, Ron, it becomes a question of, well, how much does this really matter in the upcoming election. We know the issue matters, and we know that it's going to matter because if they interfere with the election, it'll be something that we have to be concerned about in terms of the nature of compromise of our democracy. But it wasn't mentioned in the debates tonight, and not last night either. Yeah. Nobody comes after the president for it anymore. Is this just one more aspect of his Teflon uh, disposition? Well, first, I mean, your point along the way is important. It matters if the Russians feel that they have a green light uh, tacitly to interfere in the election again. And certainly, uh, from, you know, as Max's point and, and Jim Shudo's point, that the president, you know, was almost uh, dismissive and facetious in the way he talked about it, would certainly send that encouragement. Look, uh, it didn't come up tonight, but uh, I think that the president's uh, uh, relationship with Russia will be an issue uh, in the general election. Um, you know, when you talk about the Teflon presidency, I keep coming back to this. Uh, if you look uh, at the, the underlying reality of an unemployment rate under 4% and an approval rate barely over 40%, that should not happen. And in fact, as I have written in the last couple of weeks, if you look at people who say they are satisfied with the economy, uh, for Barack Obama and George W. Bush, three quarters of the people who are satisfied with the economy said they approved of their performance in office. For Donald Trump, it's 55 percent. That's the price of everything else that we watch, from his relationship with Putin uh, to the way he talks about race uh, to the tweeting. I mean, there is, there is a price here. Uh, and I do think this will be an issue eventually. Uh, but obviously, as you point out, was not in the Democratic uh, debates last night or tonight. It also becomes uh, who he winds up facing, right? And if you do have the Democrats uh, caught up in a situation where they seem to be, while saying he's not a racist, he's not a racist, they keep on bringing up these big moments with their front runner for racist situations, whether it was, you know, states' rights as an explanation of busing or whatever it is. You know, how do you beat somebody if you are that hurt going into it? All right, so uh, let's get one more take on this. Jimmy, are you still with us? Mm. I am indeed, Chris. All right. And listen, I, I'm ahead. just digesting again. I, I'm just, if, if I could pipe in here. This, I believe, is the first time the president has stood next to the Russian president in a public forum where they're making comments since that Helsinki moment, which by all accounts, Republican and Democrat, was an embarrassing moment for the U.S. president to take Putin's side against U.S. intelligence agencies, U.S. lawmakers, etc., about Russian interference in the election. So the first opportunity to correct that, to make a tough stand, to choose country over politics, perhaps, and the president makes light of Russian interference in the election. And that is a remarkable moment. It's a moment for this president and really for the country. And keep in mind, Chris, it's not just the words, right? Because we know this president has not made a priority of Russian interference in the election. He's had one cabinet level meeting, uh, right, uh, on election security. His chief of staff told uh, the, the former uh, Secretary of Homeland Security not to bring up election security with the president because he associates it with somehow demeaning his election victory in 2016. So on a number of fronts, this is a president who doesn't take election security seriously. Mm. And once again here, he makes a joke about it. And, and keep in mind this, Chris, too. It's not a question of whether Russia will attempt to interfere again in 2020, at least in the view of U.S. intelligence agency. It's just a question of to what degree and how they will attempt to interfere. That's the view of U.S. national security establishment. And the president made light of it again. I, I, I just don't think we can underestimate uh, what a moment that is uh, for this president. Yeah. I mean, even our, uh, our banner right now, Trump offhand comment to Putin, don't meddle in election. Offhand is actually giving it uh, more credit than it deserves. Uh, Jimmy, Max, yeah. Ron, thank you Making very much.